you for coming. And, and on behalf of the Spring Level team and, and the Nokia Level teams, I want you to welcome. You're probably sitting on one of the largest 5G footprint in the world. Uh, in New York, we cover 1.7 million people today uh, on launch day. And the footprint will obviously is going to grow. Um, in addition, uh, today we are also um, announcing a launch in Washington, D.C. It's going to cover more than half a million people. And today we are also launching Phoenix. Um, and we're going to cover almost a million people in Phoenix over a really wide uh, geography. And I'm headed to L.A. as soon as this event is over. And tomorrow we're launching L.A. Um, it's going to cover more than 1.2 million people. So Sprint is off to a good start um, because we have the right asset to roll up 5G. It's a 2.5 gigahertz band. As I've said before, you know, the race to 5G is going to be won by the guy with the most unused fresh spectrum that is not used for LTE. It, it sounds like an irony, um, but you know, Spring has a lot of uh, untapped spectrum in a 2.5 gigahertz band uh, that now we're bringing to play together with LTE to support basically dual mode from our base station, and that's how we have built Manhattan uh, and New York with, with, with Nokia. Uh, in addition, in May, we have already launched uh, Houston, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, as well as Kansas City. Um, Chicago was launched actually in July, but the rest of the, the, the previous markets were launched in May. And since then, we have been actually uh, adding to the footprint as well. For instance, in Dallas, um, today we now cover uh, some important suburbs like uh, Plano, uh, uh, Richardson, uh, Garland, I think Eulis as well. Uh, they weren't covered when we launched. So we're growing our footprint as we go, even in the, uh, in the previously uh, launched markets. So how, how does the, uh, the network perform now that we have launched since May? So we have some early results. I'll, I'll, I'll share them with you. These are very early results, so take them with a pinch of salt. Obviously, we're going to build a lot more capacity and a lot more momentum. Uh, but P3, which is a, a highly respected third-party uh, benchmark uh, test uh, company, came in and tested some of our launch markets, uh, not all of them. Uh, they, they, they went to Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, and Kansas City. Uh, they drove almost 900 miles uh, in those markets. And, and to see whether they can actually uh, find 5G and what sort of 5G performance they get. 64% um, time on sprint 5G, basically as they show where the markets and randomly drive. 64% um, actually, it's, it's a very high number, uh, especially you know, compared to our competition. If you have a millimeter away 5G network that, that is you know, significantly smaller than 64%, in fact, I think Root Metrics uh, did a similar test in, in Korea, who has also a very dense network. I think they were seeing about 45% 5G in Seoul uh, in, the, in the areas that they drive. So 64%, I think we're off to a good start. Obviously, uh, they drove uh, with a 5G device. They turned on 5G on and off to see the performance on LTE, and then look at the ENDC performance. So you have a combination of 5G and LTE, and they see a 55% improvement. Uh, obviously, when 5G is enabled uh, with ENDC, uh, peak speeds are uh, significantly higher than LTE as well. Now, the LTE network is not too shabby, right? It's LTE advanced as well. But we wanted them to see you know, what the difference is when, when you see 5G on the Sprint network versus just LTE advanced. Okay? Now, P3's uh, results, I think it's available on the website. If you actually go to the website, or our comms folks can, can direct you there, you can actually see. Um, uh, a copy of their publicly available test results over the Sprint uh, 5G network. I think this is probably one of the most extensive uh, 5G drive tests uh, that anyone has ever benchmarked. Originally, P3 was here to actually try to benchmark uh, the state of 5G networks in America, but they could not find uh, enough uh, 5G signals from our competitors. So they just focus on Sprint and compare Sprint against uh, Sprint LTE. In fact, the only city where they were able to find uh, other people's 5G signal was in Chicago. And even then, they had to shrink it really small. And I found that uh, you know, even in the shrunken coverage area, they could only find 6% of time on 5G for the other guy. Uh, the screen was about 75%, if I'm not mistaken. 
So, so, so you know, clearly a big difference in how 5G is being built and a big difference in, in the spectrum assets that we use. Um, Ookla, as well, has started, uh, you know, Ookla is a, is a uh, uh, crowdsourced speed test. I think usually when you run speed test, it goes to Ookla. Uh, we pulled some results from them. Uh, this is nothing to do with Spring. We just went to the website and pulled out some results. You can see the, uh, the Spring 5G devices are starting to make an impression on Google uh, compared to LTE, uh, which is about you know, 35, 37 megabit per second. Those are the fastest LTE networks. Uh, the 5G uh, Spring devices are, are averaging about uh, six times faster than LTE advanced. Again, the LTE advanced is it's not too shabby. Uh, and like I say, the fastest LTE networks today is about 30, 37, 38 megabit per second or, or around in you know, the high 30s. But the, the 5G devices obviously blows it out of the water, which, which is a good sign. Uh, if Spring continues to, to build on our 5G footprint and sell more 5G phones, you can see where the speeds are going to go. It's going to go way beyond what LTE advanced can support. Um, this is the performance that we have seen so far with our customers. Um, we find that our 5G subscribers are actually spending more time with their 5G devices, three times more time on their devices, and they're using five times more data. Which supports the notion that we all know in wireless that if you give our customers a more capable network and a better phone, they will find ways to use it. In fact, one of the things I was noticing as well on our HTC Hub, there was a lot of customers who, who is actually playing Xbox with it. And I wasn't sure why until I spoke to Eli. He said, yeah, I was the guy that played a lot of Xbox with it. I'm not sure where he plays it, but uh, you know, that's some of the, the, the use cases that we're starting to see. Uh, Hatch is gonna come up, uh, Vesa is gonna show you basically one of the new concepts in gaming, which is cloud gaming. Right? Basically it means you don't have to download anything, uh, no, you don't have to download any games, you don't need big memory storage, you just play it off the cloud. Right, it works really well with 5G, and Vesa is going to talk to, to talk to it. But these are some of the, the encouraging things that we see with what our users are doing in the early days uh, on, on the Spring 5G network. So basically, you get a much better experience. Uh, when you download Fortnite, it's going to take a minute. Uh, it's probably not meaningful to you, but for your teenage kids, it's very meaningful to download Fortnite in under a minute. Uh, you can download the HD movie 1080p uh, in, in 120 seconds or less. In fact, I was doing a walkthrough, we downloaded a movie on Iron Man in, I think, 16 seconds. So, so it's pretty fast. Uh, I'm not sure why we picked Monty Python, but it was just a benchmark. Uh, it's 120 seconds. And songs, obviously, is going to download a lot faster as well. So coming back to New York, um, I think this motto is here. So we used one of what they did before, but in early days of 5G, to see how our 5G density compares with the competition. Usually, when an operator does this, you would, they will usually try to find the strongest area where we have the strongest signal, and then benchmark it against the competition to make sure we win. In this case, actually we did the opposite because we could not find the other guy's signal. We actually went all over New York to actually find some 5G signal so that we can compare ourselves again. So we found some signal in the East Village. Uh, so the other guy is, is in blue. And, and you can see that we only found a few spots. But if you can, that, that is the limitations with millimeter wave. Very high capacity, very peak speeds, but nowhere to go with all that speed. All right? Look at Sprint, right? more consistency in coverage, and anywhere you go around Manhattan, you can see that we can pick up some really strong signals. In fact, my team was running around looking for the other guy's signal. It's almost like trying to find Waldo. Um, sometimes they see it, sometimes they don't. And, and they were testing on Sunday as well around here, and uh, between 5th and 6th Avenue on 47th. And they were so into the testing, they were oblivious to what actually happened there on Sunday afternoon. Uh, you guys have read in the new in the papers, there was a big robbery. Uh, there, it happened right across from where guys are, and we didn't even notice it. Um, we didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Hopefully this gives you a glimpse of, of basically what New York is like. This is just the beginning. Rome is not built in one day. Uh, we're off to a good start. Uh, we are very proud of what we've built. And we are also very proud and thankful for our partnership with Nokia, who has stuck with us for many years. 
I'm going to ask Ricky to come up. Um, Rick, Ricky and I did a 5G demo uh, in 2015 in the Copa America soccer tournament in San Francisco under a tent. It was 110 degrees, extremely hot, to show what 5G could look like. Four years later, fast forward, today I'm so proud to ask Ricky to come up again, because today, together we're launching one of the largest 5G footprint in the world.